If you told me that I would be here in Brodus, Montana, I'd have said, this place is finally open when I'm coming through. That must be why I'm here. I am so excited to see something new. Let's go in. It's a cold day, but it is sunny and beautiful, and here we go. James Weathered Antiques is open every day except Sunday. Every day I have come through here has been a Sunday, so I've never seen it before other than from the outside. But my goodness, cream separators and wheelbarrows and lawn mowers and a really cool Greyhound wagon over here. Wow, that's kind of neat. A radio flyer. There's everything from hubcaps to tools to old brass beds to who knows what in this place. So we're going to find out. Well, my first impression coming in here is that this is actually not so much of a junk store as it looks from the outside. This looks like a really nice antique store in here, so I'm excited to see what all they have. These little koala banks came from the San Diego Zoo. I remember seeing them around the area when I was a kid. The koalas could live at the zoo in San Diego because they have eucalyptus trees in San Diego. So why do you open a shop in a place as remote as this? We are closer to Little Bighorn than we are to any major city near the Crow Indian Reservation here. But cheap real estate and people drive through. And way out west like this, we're expecting to see lots of things like old sat irons, old practical things people had around the house. Interesting shape to that Taylor's iron and the opening at the top held coal. Neat old quilt here, and priced about like quilts are priced. Should date around the 1940s based on the colors. Below here is early repurposing in the form of a crazy quilt made of suit liners and pants and things. You definitely expect to find winter weight quilts in Montana, and these are all heavier and more substantial, and that is part of the price. Montana Silversmith and other giant satellite-sized belt buckles have been around long enough to be vintage now. Pocket knives always sell too. Among this cute and playful shelf is this guy, and this looks like 50s or 30s. Oh, 30s. I actually prefer the 30s Japan kitsch in some ways because you just don't see quite as much of it. It's under $10. Oh, yes, I think I'll get this. And he's got a great little pore spout in his face. Montana was settled first seriously in the 1880s, so we see a lot of things from that time. The Art Nouveau ink stand there. This piece is a little later. It's pyrography from about 1910. This one was colored in, in New Braunfels, Texas. Well, a lot of connections between Texas and Montana because of the oil industry, and so we actually see items from both states interchangeably in the other one, funnily enough. Some fun 1930s books and a bunch of office supplies, advertising pens, because when you're way out in places like this, you need to know where to call when you need help. And then this is for measuring how much feed your cows are eating. So you can definitely tell where we are. This place is definitely an old school layered in antique shop, and it's fun to see these. There's not so many around anymore. I'm sure this place has been here 20 or 30 or more years. It was here the first time I drove by here, and this is the first time it's ever been open when I've been in town. Neat old desk here. It looks like a station master's desk from a railroad. And then the inkwell here in cast iron at 125. This is, oh, Schaefer's pens. That's a cross collectible. I find advertising lighters of this era sell well, particularly in the West, but really all over the country, especially depending on what they're advertising. Those prices seem fair and a little cheap. This is a Montana Troopers campaign style hat, not a World War I doughboy hat, even though the shape is the same, 75 on that. They do have some military hats and things here. All of these would have come from local estates and be owned by people known in the area. Our school in the 1970s was still using an old mimeograph machine like this. The very first copy, or this is 125. We see a ton of novelty pillowcases that are patriotic themes sent home in World War II. We don't see very many from World War I, and this one's really good. It's got Woodrow Wilson on it. It has a biplane. In the right hands, this definitely is worth more than they have on it. I think it could be as much as $50 at a political show. Ooh, someone's dad had some fun in the 70s. Is it art or kitsch? You be the judge. I really like 1920s and 30s cast iron toys, but no doors, that's a problem, and a big price. That's one thing about old school shops. Sometimes you'll see neat things that are just not quite right and that have been there too long. On the other hand, these are Kelvin's Japan. These are cute from the 1960s. I've sold these many times before, and wow, only $6 a pair. That just goes to show you, it all depends where you're selling what you think you can get. With more leisure time came things like bridge parties, and this bridge marker is from the 1920s. It's a cute souvenir piece. Let's see where it's from. 
uh, Colorado, Ooh, the Seven Falls. Yes, that's a very beautiful place. And there's a lot more people in Colorado who collect that sort of thing now than there were when it was made. So I think we'll go ahead and pick this up. It's only a couple dollars and people in Florida like to play cards too. So I'll bet there's a customer for this somewhere. A lot of traditional China that gets ignored now, but those grape trivets are really fun. Grapes and pineapples from the 70s in the blue and pink. Their prices are very fair here, and they've got a nice selection, but Pyrex has definitely been discovered everywhere you go. People everywhere around the country love it. I like the blue snowflake. That's a particularly nice pattern, in my opinion. I've always enjoyed. And they've got the primary color fridge dish. Now, here's a World War II pillow cover, but this one also has some originality. It is from the South Pacific. We don't see those often. But they made lots of different kinds here. We've got lovely oranges. That'd be fun in Florida and the Black Hills of South Dakota. They all seem to be priced fairly in the $10 to $15 range. They're fun to collect and hang on a wall, and they are easy to ship for resellers. Next to the big pink hull basket are the candle holders that are Roseville Bittersweet pattern. That is a floral pattern that came out very late in their production, around 1950. And because of that, it wasn't really caught up in their big heyday of collecting 30 years ago. But the prices have actually been increasing because now people really appreciate those colors again. So it's a good pattern to pick up that didn't go through the hype of the first wave of Roseville collecting. Just have to look at these little silver tone jewelry pieces next to the silver plate flatware. I never expect a professional dealer who's been in the business for a long time to let sterling slip through at this point. Unless it's silver and glass coasters, because for some reason a lot of dealers miss those. It's not a ton of silver, but it does add up when you have a set of them. So those are good to look at. I like the blue glass here. This vignette takes me back to when I first was in the business. So many spaces look like this. Very sweet and charming. This forest green Mary Gregory style Bohemian Glass 1960s little scent bottle is only $20 and I'll take it at that price. I still think these should sell around $40. This tea set down here is interesting. It's from about 1920 and it has a mark I didn't expect. Picard China. This is a good China decorating company out of Illinois. But they almost exclusively were known for gilding. In the later years, gilding on a brocade finish was all they did. I think the blanks were made in Czechoslovakia and then they have them sent over here and decorated on them. It's only $38 and it has these very sweet hand-painted Dutch scenes with the windmills and the girl. There is something so heartwarming about Vintage Kitchen that it finds a place in almost any antique store and in a lot of collector homes. This is cute back here. This is for a restaurant and the sandwich shop. Oh, look at that. Out of the 30s. Oh, and cheap. You know, some guy named Andy is going to come along and want this, right? I think I better get it. To the right of the ubiquitous anchor hawking pitcher is this cafe where cup and saucer set. That is Teddy Roosevelt and I believe the people at Medora. Medora was a wealthy Frenchman's ranch and cattle transportation north of here. And Teddy Roosevelt spent a lot of time. In fact, the national park near there is named after him. Oh, these are great double color Bakelite slash Catalan utensils and they're serrated. That's really wonderful. The price is great. People still like the two-tone and I will get those right away. What a neat old ivory and green stove. This one has a hood which is really cool. There is an art to displaying kitchenware and other things that were utilitarian in their time in a way that's really interesting and fun to look at now and they really do a good job of that here. Bromwell Sifter is a classic in many American kitchens. They used to just be the plain metal. At some point in the 50s and 60s, they started screen printing apples and cherries on them. Collectors really like them, and $15 is a good price. I usually get about $25 for mine. This is known as Sears Cattail, but that's because it was sold by Sears in their catalog. They didn't make anything, of course, so that's why it has the Universal China Ivory mark on the bottom of it from the 30s. Cute line. Looks like my hair on a windy show day. This is Pippi Longstocking, I guess, and she's $59. I've never seen this wall pocket before. It looks American. Well, the only antique store for 150 miles in either direction turned out to be pretty cute, and I'll definitely come back to Brodus, Montana. Well, that place was fudded. I'm going to look down their porch while I talk to you about uh, hitting that subscribe button, please because that way I can let you know of future videos. You can click the bell to be notified. Also, if you are interested in memberships, please click the join button if you see that below. 
or you can look for the membership link in the description. The West certainly is beautiful and this is my last day to see the mountains, so I'm going to enjoy it while I can. A hundred miles down the road we get to the next town. The skies are dimming, but if we're lucky we'll be able to shop one or two of the antique stores in Belfouche, South Dakota. Here we are. I have been waiting 20 years to get back here. Let's see if it's changed. I am so excited to show you this. Two antique stores still in Belfouche, South Dakota at the center of the United States of America. Geographic center, that is. Relic Diggers here, which looks really cool. And then this one, which I remember, this is Love That Shop. And it says they're open. I have been missing this place. I've been coming through here on Sundays. I haven't been here in a really long time. It looks like a dusty version of its old self. Let's see, past the blue luster, the first thing that catches my eye is this Google-eyed toothpick. Porcelain bisque, I think that one's German. Japanese would have done similar, but the quality is really good on this guy. 20 bucks. Tender leaf tea, this crock cooler is from the 50s, and any of those that are advertising, that seems like a great price. I should make an offer and take it with me, but my car's so full, I'm afraid to look at glass for the same reason. They have nice Fenton and Imperial, and who oh boy. I did remember this place had a lot of glass specialties, and they've got a bunch of Swarovski, including the old s marks the square s mark is swarovski a lot of people miss that lots of fenton down here i really like the green hobnail opalescent pitcher that is 180 and that twist milk glass with the blue is cool too i just think this is pretty not all custard glass by fenton is the same the beige does not glow under a black light like the custard and the lime do nor does the blue what a fun bunch of carnival chalkware. These are in pretty good shape. I like the green horse and rider. Color's not appropriate, but lots of horses because of where we are. Now, prices are not as high as they used to be on these pieces, but if you find Disney or something with a cute face or that appeals to a certain collector, here's a bulldog, for example, priced at 25 well, then you might actually have a potential for profit. I think 25 is about the right price on him, though. I like this guy. Look at that face. He looks like Elmer from the Elmer and Elsie, the Borden cows. And for that reason, that might not be a bad deal. These things look cold and chilly and forlorn here. Oh, the little sailboat thermometer is cute, but it has a broken mast. Maybe this coconut purse will be our lucky thing. Let's see how cheap it is and how bad it wants to go south. Ooh, $12. It wins. It's going south. It's funny, as a dealer, when you get onto something, you start buying it over and over. And she does have a lot of interesting salt and pepper shaker sets. These are mostly early 50s Japanese here and the Western Airline ones, which are hard to find now. My favorite milk glass is Opalescent, and this Fostoria heirloom is just a great piece to me. And then, of course, she has a lot of depression glass that will glow under a black light. I like early American pattern glass if it's colorful, and these patterns are U.S. glass made a bunch named after states. This is the California pitcher. The teal color is nice. I like, even in this clear one, the fact that the daisy has the green wash and the gilding. It just adds a little dimension to those patterns so you can see them better. I forgot how vast this store was. It's going to be impossible to see everything in the amount of time we have, but we're going to do our best. When you have to drive so far between shops, you get the time you get. I see something above the Lennox porcelain, and it is this Phoenix glass using the old consolidated mold pinecone vase. And wow, that's a great price. This custard doesn't glow under a black light, but at that price, it doesn't matter. I just sold my Charlton decorated Westmoreland wedding box like the painted one you saw there. Let's see, Empoli? You know, it's amber and it's the grapes. It's just about the hardest one to sell to me. Eh, at that price, I don't know. I don't think I'll take it. Now, these are earlier custard glass pieces and they should glow under a black light, but the amount of uranium they have varies. This is lighter than Cambridge Crown Tuscan. This is Jeanette Shell Pink. It was very popular in the 1950s. Times changed. 20 years ago when I came in here, you wouldn't have seen a piece like this, even though it was 60s or 70s because it was orange. Well, now Hager is hot and it's $65. When you live where it's cold and there's not a lot of entertainment, quilting becomes a big deal. And there's some really pretty ones up here and appliques too. I have to give the owner credit. If she has a category, she really goes for it. Look at all the clocks. I like the carriage clocks a lot. 
I don't see prices that I can afford to pay, but I think they're fair retail. These girls are swooning over this folk art cat, and this is so cute. It might have been used as a lingerie press or maybe a muff for a child. $10.95, great deal. It is a Mod Mod world of 60s flower power jewelry, and I love this stuff. She said seven bucks each. I'm going to get a whole bunch. Here's my little pile. No chips on these. I tell you a lot that crocs and jugs are popular, and they certainly are in this part of the country too, but a lot of these are mid to late 20th century. Now this one is marked down, but this is a great Hall China deco pitcher, and the color is really in keeping with modern interiors, so this may be a firm retail now. Because I have a lot of tableware, I really look for the thing that isn't like everything else. Dealer plaques are not like everything else. These were in stores to help sell the stuff, so they didn't make nearly as many. And this one's cheap enough. I'm, I'm going to get this. I'll bet someone with a collection will love it. Francoma pottery is a western staple. And the little Nyan Aztec mini pitcher with the bone colored glaze is a nice shade. When I have as full a van as I do, I start looking at jewelry because I know I can probably fit some. I do like cameos, but most of these seem to be molded plastic rather than the shell type that I prefer. Well, after 29 years here, she still loves her shop. She's selling some old collector's reference books. Boy Scouts Beyond the Arctic Circle. $10 from 1913. These folks have bought a lot of estates over the years. This place is full. The preppy look was in about 1950. Abercrombie and Fitch had lots of plaids in their catalog, and so did a lot of dinnerware makers, including Taylor Smith Taylor. This is the versatile line. Versatile is the blank. It's a coupe shape, meaning no rim. That was very modern at the time. Not surprising we're seeing more Sears cattail in this part of the country because a lot of people had to live by mail order catalog way out in Montana and South Dakota in the early days. Where I sell out west, this is a very easy sale. The Siesta Wear barrel mugs from the late 60s and the have the nice brands and spurs and great things printed on them and this one has the tray with the rope handles that is something i would buy if it was cheap enough oh 35 though i would only get 45 to 50 for this set so not quite enough room for me darn it Ooh, spooky you never know what lives in the back corner Seriously, though, this place just goes on and on. I remembered that one of the stores in the antique business here was big, but I didn't remember that it was this one, so glad they're still here. Lots of fun things to see. Or not to see. Good thing I have good night vision. Here we go. I'm lost. Well, I followed the light to heaven where I'm being met by these very cute little paper mache carolers from the early 70s. Are any of them not blemished? They're collectible because they're hard to find in good shape. This one's $15. Yeah, that's what I'd want to charge for it. 1950s creches and creche pieces are always good sellers. Now, this place was founded at the height of the cookie jar craze, and boy, they still have a lot, which is fun. This one on the left is not something I've ever seen before. I can't say that about most cookie jars. It is $75, and it is from... Austria. Oh, this looks like something from about 1910 or so. What an interesting piece. I've never seen that. What other cookie jars do they have? Some frightening clowns. And oh, yes, the owl is Twin Winton. The Winton twins were great designers. And that one looks Japanese to me. It's a little flimsier, even though it is vintage. There's some that were not vintage when they came in here that are now. Now there's a treasure craft hiding in the back corner there. Let's see what else we have. The typical apple cookie jar. There's another twin Winton with the candy house. That was popular in its time. And that one is treasure craft, the siesta guy right in the middle there. Oh, tea parties are back and I have a viewer who really wants the McCoy Rustic teapot set, which we used to see a lot, but they're not worth as much as they have on that tag. 75 for the single is a better deal, though. These are Polish-American fraternal ribbons. A lot of people from that part of the world migrated to the Plains states in the early 1900s. Unfortunately, because this place closes at 4 in the winter, I still haven't gotten to show you this. They have some very nice more interesting than normal, truly antique oil lamps. These kerosene lanterns are from 
sometime between 1900 and the Depression era, you notice the different patterns to the feet, the fact that they have color. The one in the back is quite ornate in an 1890s style. This place looks like it's a lot of fun. It looks like it's very Western focused and maybe a little more towards decorative than the store we just saw. But I have to say Belfouche has always been fun and I am so glad I got to shop at that place again. And wow, I spent $307. I just knew I was meant to come back. So next we're gonna do a little bit of a haul because I bought some pretty cool jewelry and I'm gonna show you. But first, a beautiful night's drive to our destination through the snowy mountains of the west. This is not a blue filter, this is the actual color I'm seeing. I'm trying to stay ahead of the storm, so I'm going to drive to Mitchell, South Dakota tonight, and then when we get to the hotel, we will have a little hall party. Well, we liberated a lot of things from a long, cold, snowy winter. Some of them looked like they'd been in this place for a while, and some of them looked like they were new stock, but we just got good deals, like these little pixies here. Only $6 for the pair. Now, they're 1960s vintage. They're by Kelvin's from Japan. They have their little wings like they're supposed to, and they're not damaged. That's the important part, but they were only $3 each. That's like a thrift store price. Behind them, we have this cute little thing that is a bridge score marker so you can keep track of your suits. There are your hearts, there are your spades, there are your clubs. I guess you could use this for any card game where you have to keep track of things. But I know it's bridge because one of the things said no trumps because trumps is a bridge term. But the nicest thing was that she was so happy I came back after all these years. Everybody likes a repeat customer, I guess, so she made me a really nice deal on a bunch of Matisse jewelry that is on the original card, some of it with the price tag showing that these were 3 and $4 when they were new in the late 50s and early 60s. The ones with the enamel, the Matisse, are going to be the more valuable. I know lots of dealers who look for these two complete sets and collectors who will love the fact that they have their original cards, so I bought all the ones I thought were more interesting designs or had good enameling and were in good condition. It's a neat little collection and it's heading south just in time because jewelry is definitely something we're seeing hot this season. Which is why I also picked out all of the enamel flower power pins that I could find that didn't have any chips or damage. You have to be careful because these were cheap in their day. They were just fun fashion jewelry. I love that there's ear clips with polka dots. This is great because it's got some rhinestones in the middle. I think all of these are interesting in some way. That one's flashy with the three colors. The bright red is always a popular color. So I was pretty jazzed to get a bunch of these and it'll be nice to have a bunch of fresh jewelry going into my winter shows in Florida. Because we still have some of winter left, I think that we'll have a chance to move a whole lot of these pieces and they will never have to be cold again, especially this poor gal who was very dusty. She clearly was not meant to be here. They were asking 12, they ended up giving it to me for 8 or 10, I can't remember. But it was just cute enough for that price. How could you say no? Besides, I can put lots of little jewelry and trinkets in it to haul around to shows. I guess I could fill this up too, and boy, that's a pretty piece. I've always liked Phoenix and Consolidated Glass. Phoenix is this one because it's the opaque, not the translucent version of this pattern that would have been done by Consolidated. But what a great price, $20 for a really good quality piece of glass. That will sell very readily. I also thought the Mary Gregory piece from Bohemia was very nice. Anchor Hawking made this ashtray in the Manhattan pattern in the 1930s and then converted it slightly to be used for a lot of institutional uses like the Army Air Corps here. That will sell very easily to a military f person who is collecting. Vietnam may as well. That's a cute little piece that would have been sent over by a sailor or soldier. This is just wonderful. I love dealer plaques because you know there are not that many around and there are collectors who like to have them for their displays. And that's where I'm sure that this one will go. This one with the castle logo is 19, late 60s, early 70s, and it was only $15. This cute little guy. $9 at the first store in Montana. Just very sweet and cute and colorful and whimsical. And those are all good selling points, so I'm sure that he will not last long in my menagerie. 
Now this little sign would be even better if it was embossed, but it's a good screen pane and you can tell it's 60s and it was under $5. The Bakelite utensils were $4 each, and then we have the cafe cup also for Andy's uh, sandwich shop, and these will all go very nicely together. I have a feeling I will display them just exactly like this, and I bet somebody comes along who knows an Andy is an Andy, or just really likes sandwiches. Warwick was a company in another part of West Virginia. I'm not sure whether Price Colton Company was a restaurantware distributor, or if in fact they also made stuff and put a Warwick name on it in order to trade on the other firm's good name. I know we have some viewers around Huntington, maybe one of them can tell us a little bit more about the conflict between those names. So today's spend was about $350, I'm expecting to clear about $850 out of the pieces because we got a lot of jewelry and we got some things that will really add up. So wish us luck, onward we go! If you enjoyed this video, check out this one! Also, click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.